In this brief presentation, I'll review the assessment and management of patients with biochemical recurrence after local treatment with either surgery or radiation therapy. Biochemical recurrence is a big problem in the U.S. The population is large, as high as uh, half a million patients uh, each year. Guidelines for evaluation treatment vary considerably. Adjuvant radiation after surgery is uncommon. Salvage is a more common scenario. On the graph here, I showed the biochemical-free survival rates for men who underwent radical prostatectomy at UCSF. Rather low for low-risk patients, but uh, substantial for those men with high-risk disease. When patients recur uh, after surgery with a rising PSA, for some patients, the additional treatment is very clear. For others, the, the outcome after uh, adjuvant or salvage radiation is less clear. So a patient who's got PT2 disease, at least in three-fourths positive margin, that patient has a very high chance of being salvaged with radiation therapy. But taking a patient with higher risk disease than one surgery who has negative margins, that patient's likelihood of response to radiation therapy may be as low as 8%. So increasingly now, we're trying to treat such men uh, with very targeted forms of treatment to identify which patients may benefit and where the sites of disease really are. This is a good example of a patient, 69-year-old man who went with radical prostatectomy in 2014, T2C lesion, at least in three, four positive margin, patient went salvage radiation therapy for a PSA recurrence of 0.34 in 2015, but then the PSA rose to 0.59. A PSMA PET scan showed a lesion uh, in the uh, pelvic bones, which was not seen on conventional CT scan, but seen very clearly here on PSMA PET scan. So this was a study, a prospective trial of men with a detectable PSA or a formal biochemical recurrence, a PSA greater than 0.2 following radical prostatectomy. It was an IRB approved protocol at UCSF. Uh, we included patients who underwent prior adjuvant or salvage radiation therapy, and, and in addition, men who had a previous androgen deprivation therapy. We did exclude patients with castrate-resistant prostate cancer. So of the patient population, about a third of them had prior hormonal therapy. It was a higher risk population. About two thirds had PT3A or greater lesions. 17% had positive lymph nodes. Positive margins were seen in 36% of these patients. As you can see here for Gleason score, very few patients in this cohort had low grade disease. Most had intermediate or high risk prostate cancer. What I'm showing you now is at various PSA levels, going from low, uh, uh, 0.2, to as high as uh, six or greater, the likelihood of a positive PSMA PET. You can see as you increase the PSA level, the likelihood of a positive PSMA PET increases substantially. A good rule of thumb is that with a patient with a PSA of 0 0.2 to 0.5 after surgery, about half those patients will be identified to have recurrent cancer in specific locations. If we look further to identify the site of recurrence, the prostate bed was a site of recurrence in about 15% of patients. And I should mention that all patients underwent imaging of the prostate bed, usually with the combination of both ultrasound and frequently uh, MRI as well. So about 15% of patients failed in the prostate bed, the, the other recurrences were elsewhere. If we look where those recurrences were, about in green here, we see the number of patients who had recurrence in pelvic lymph nodes. The red shows recurrence in areas beyond the uh, pelvic uh, brim. Most of these were retroperitoneal nodes. Now, I realize that patients can fail more in more than one site. Some had uh, both pelvic and retroperitoneal nodes. And now if I take the patients who are radiation naive, we see again very similar results. The patients who had never received radiation therapy at following surgery still had a low likelihood of prostate bed recurrence. Again, this is a UCSF study. The majority were seen in the pelvic lymph nodes and in the retroperitoneal lymph nodes. Again, if they had previous, if they had previous radiation, we see that we could still we still saw a prostate bed recurrence despite previous radiation in a small set of uh, subset of patients. 
these patients had a slightly higher risk of extra pelvic disease. If I show you a summary of all sites in all patients, again, patients could have failed in more than one site. Again, 15% in prostate bed, uh, pelvic lymph nodes in 45%, extra pelvic in 46%, bone in 24% of patients, and we saw unusual sites of recurrence, lung, supraclavicular nodes in about 7% of patients. This is an important uh, concept. And, uh, this is a study done in patients before radiation therapy. I could have showed you a similar slide before surgery. Again, these are high-risk patients, one-to-one -one PSMA PET imaging. And it turns out that if you look at these patients and you use PSMA PET imaging, you'll change therapy in about 45% of patients. And the reason for this is that about 30 to 40% of men identified to have pelvic lymph node involvement have positive lymph nodes outside the normal fields for either radiation or surgery. So again, you will adjust your radiation fields and your surgical fields based on PSMA PET imaging in high-risk patients before surgery. If we look at the distribution of these lymph nodes, we saw them uh, in uh, lots of different locations. We frequently saw uh, perirectal lymph nodes. Uh, we see, certainly see it in the prostate bed in some patients. But again, the distribution of these lesions is uh, really all over the, uh, you know, perirectal lymph nodes, uh, inguinal lymph nodes, uh, obdurator lymph nodes. And if you look at the distribution of retroperitoneal disease, you'll see that the, uh, we see it as high as the uh, renal hilum uh, and certainly distribution along the common iliac arteries. And we've actually seen it all. So in unusual locations, supraclavicular lymph nodes, uh, paratracheal lymph nodes, the areas that we would not have identified it uh, previously. So in conclusion, the majority of men with biochemical recurrence have PSMA avid lesions. The prostate bed is an uncommon site of recurrent disease. At initial diagnosis and at recurrence, regional disease may be outside the standard templates for lymph node dissection or radiation therapy. So this has opened a new paradigm uh, when evaluating men with biochemical recurrence. Because response to radiation therapy is variable, uh, although it can be predicted, the optimal timing of radiation is unclear. As I mentioned before, frequently these nodes are outside the field of radiation therapy. Salvage radiation, certainly to the prostate bed can have side effects. And the dose for uh, adjuvant radiation therapy is relatively limited at 45 uh, gray. So I think nowadays, uh, for those who have biochemical recurrence, we want to confirm recurrence, assess kinetics. If these are patients who had positive margins, a positive decipher, I think radiation is reasonable. If it can be predicted to be, uh, it'll be effective. I think for patients with high risk features, certainly margin negative, that don't predict response to radiation therapy favorably, uh, will frequently monitor such patients when they get to a PSA cut point of 0.2, will consider PSMA I try and identify the site of disease and treat very selectively, whether it be with stereotactic body radiation and an occasion with a salvage lymphadenectomy. I think the future will, will we certainly need a larger sample size. Uh, UCSF and UCLA are bringing gallium PSMA PET to the FDA for approval. I think we'll see the therapeutic programs being developed, their agnostics and cell therapy. We need to certainly accrue to clinical trials and in order to determine the true impact of PSMA PET imaging, a randomized trial uh, would be necessary. I think for the future, one uh, being a surgeon, one difficulty one has in doing a lymph node dissection is trying to identify normal size lymph nodes which might be involved based on PSMA PET imaging. So Intuitive Surgical has developed a PSMA PET fluorophore, and we hope by the first quarter of 2020 that we'll have a phase one trial here at UCSF where patients with high-risk features will undergo PSMA PET uh, fluorophoral injection 24 hours before surgery, and then it will allow us to image with advanced Firefly technology, both regional lymph nodes and the prostate to assess margins and perform a more targeted uh, and therapeutic lymphadenectomy. And I want to thank all the contributors to this a presentation, my collaborators here at UCSF and Tour of Surgical. Thank you very much.